everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? Good, Mike. Good to see you. You know, I'm not big on following this, but I think we might be a couple episodes away from 500. Yeah, we're I think closing we, in fast. I think this is 498. I think it's really close. I know, like, look, I'm the new guy, and I've been doing this with you for like six or seven years. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and honestly, I'm probably sure when we record episode 500, when we hit the stop button and we're done recording, I'll be like, oh, crap. That was episode 500. Completely <laughs> forgot about it. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look. But and yeah, I mean, we're, we're fast approaching it. Um, yeah. That's so, super cool. y- yeah. God. I mean, in podcast land, you know, because you've been in this space longer than most, uh, you know, podcasts to get to 500 episodes, that's a major milestone that, you know, maybe the top five or 10% of podcasts. Not, I was just going to say, it's not even that. I've seen some stats that basically. I think about one to 2% wow. of the podcasts out there go That's this huge. long, go yeah. this long. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know what that and we're says. just getting warmed up. Do we have no life. I mean, that. <laughs> well, you know? I just look, I love doing this. I love the conversations for a couple of reasons. You and I would be doing this anyway. Over, We, we still do. We still do right. it every, every right. day. We're on, on messenger That's going, right. What about this? What about that? That's right. And so the fact that we're recording it, that's just nice. But the other part of it is I learn stuff every week too. You know, we're asking these people questions. And to be honest with you, I think some of my favorite shows are when somebody cancels and we just go, what do you want to talk? Yep. 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 Absolutely. Um, So so, um, real quick before we get into this week's show, because there is another short topic I want to bring up real quick before the interview. Uh, quick shout out to Hypebot and Bands in Town for all of your support. And of course, to our sponsors. And before I get into our sponsors, if you've got a product or service that you would like to get on to the Music Biz Weekly podcast, reach out to either Jay or myself and we'll talk to you about a sponsorship. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably pull up our sponsorship copy here. It's like <laughs> I've been doing this for I'm 500. Surprised. You could probably do it I, out of I've your I've been head. doing this for 500 episodes and I Built still- by musicians for musicians. Still yeah. forget. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our sponsors bandzoogle.com built by musicians for musicians bandzoogle is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful website and epk for your music bandzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world from weekend warriors to grammy winners all the features you need for a professional website are already built in including hosting and a custom domain name dozens of fully customizable design templates tools to sell your music and merch commission free commission free crowdfunding and fan subscription features a lot of commission free stuff yeah that's the key that's key people yep um mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters social media integrations and of course amazing live tech support from their musician friendly team seven days a week we got a great little offer we put together with everyone over at Banzoogle. Head over to Banzoogle.com, register, try it for free for 30 days. And when you register, make sure you use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY, all one word, and you'll get 15% off the first year of any subscription. And of course, DiscMakers.com. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's musicians. Digital royalty payments are so small. Selling products like CD, vinyl, T-shirts, and USB drives. I got a client that just sold a couple hundred USB drives. Nice. That they got from disc makers. At your gigs and online has become an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money, and that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your disc and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even T-shirts. So got another great little offer here. Head over to discmakers.com, place an order for 100 or more CDs, and when you check out, make sure you use the promo code Free biz, all one word, and you will save up to $150. 
in shipping. So before we get into this week's interview, real quick mention, because this is almost worthy of a whole nother show. Mm-hmm. Did you see the announcement from Title? Yes. Yeah. Title has Yeah, there's a yeah, go ahead. That title is basically we'll we'll paraphrase this real quickly. There's a lot that kind of happened in title. Title's got a free tier now. Yep. Has got their hi-fi tier and a hi-fi plus tier. And if you have fans that listen to you and they subscribe using hi-fi plus you could potentially be making more revenue off of their subscriptions because they basically adopted the 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 payment model that we've talked about in the past yeah, the user centric user centric right? if i as a user only listen to one artist shouldn't all my money go to that one artist right and, and we talked about that right yeah. it's the other model of course is a pro rata you know which is a pool of money but i think that the user centric is is more fair. If I only listen to your band all month, shouldn't you get my subscription? Should that yeah, go I to think the, the, it's, it's, the artists are going to love it. I think the fans will love it if they know they're actually doing it. So a yeah. um, couple things to keep in mind. And, and I haven't really dug into this yet. I got a, an email from distro kid about it. Um, it's only on the hi-fi plus subscriptions not the the hi-fi plus is like 19.99 a month i think mm-hmm. hi-fi is 9.99 a month and yeah, then there's free the higher free. quality so losses. it's only at yeah. the very higher tier will this user centric model be used and according to distrokid you will get up to 10% of the subscription fee so you don't get yeah. the whole thing no but you yeah. also have to opt into this Yep. So check with your distributor. Exactly. Find your out distributor. Yep. how you opt into this. Because yeah, again, even if it's only up to 10%, opt into it. It could yeah. be more Drive money. Drive traffic to it, pocket. more revenue. Yeah, and just exactly. a, a shameless plug, um, I do a weekly newsletter called Your Morning Coffee, and it comes out tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., every Friday at 5 a.m. And there's a story in there that goes through all of the details of what Mike is referring to. So... Uh, check it out. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, this is a great sign. This is, you know, we always talk about how do all these streaming services differentiate themselves because it's not by the music they offer. Right. It's not even, let's be honest, by the sound quality because they all have hi-fi tiers now, basically. This is one way title is completely differentiating themselves from all other streaming services. They're the only ones that are doing this right now. Yeah. And if this gets some traction, maybe we'll see some of the other services adopt it, discuss it, think about it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with figuring out ways to put more of that subscription money into an artist's pocket. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right, Jay. So we also have an incredible guest joining us this week. We, we sure do. We have uh, David uh, McTiernan, and David is the head of a, uh, artist, label relations, and digital marketing for the platform Vivo. And this is such a great topic, and, and I get asked this every week, you know, well, what's yeah. the difference between Vivo and YouTube? My, you know, I see Vivo videos on YouTube and there's this Vivo app. How do I get my videos onto this Vivo app? And I notice they're doing a lot of things with developing artists, you know, and I really think that David's so good at just kind of demystifying the, the platform and telling us about it in a very simple and concise way. Yeah. And, and he's got some great tips on optimizing and promoting your videos obviously these are great for vivo but they also apply to any other platform as well um but yes the uh, just like you jay i think every single client i work with always asks (laughs) what about vivo do i need to start should i start a vivo channel and upload all my videos to vivo or should i do that on youtube yeah, we get the answer right now as to what is the difference and how do they work together, Vivo and YouTube. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. 
Go to bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Today, we're joined by David McTiernan. He's the head of artist label relations and digital marketing for Vivo. David, good morning. Welcome for joining or <laughs> welcome to our show and thank you for joining us. I'm trying thank to you say. for having me. Happy, happy to be here with you guys. It's a awesome. pleasure. Thank you so much. Awesome. So much to talk about when it when it comes to uh, Vivo. Before we kind of get into uh, some of the things that you do and what Vivo does, talk a little bit about, for people who don't know, what is Vivo? Maybe they see the standalone app. Maybe they see the, you, well, you know, on yeah, YouTube or whatever. What, exactly. It's confusing gonna, to some people. I was going to say, a lot of our listeners probably are like, well, isn't Vivo just YouTube? It's all in YouTube. That's where I see all these Vivo right. videos. And let's let's clear the air on yeah. that. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. If if I had a dollar for every time I had to answer that question. <laughs> I bet. Um, no, it's a it's a it's a pretty common starting point. And I think, you know, for anyone who's watched uh, music videos uh, on YouTube, they see that Vivo watermark, and that is sort of the the starting point. There's there's good brand recognition there of of knowing that that watermark is sort of a sort of a verified check mark of sorts. It kind of means it's the official premium version of, of a video, the one that's kind of coming from the artist directly. Uh, we know that that's sort of the starting point of understanding for a lot of people uh, as fans and, and even some artists. They, they kind of know that, that having that Vivo watermark is a, a sort of, again, a, a check mark of, of premium quality, um, but aren't necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but don't necessarily understand kind of who we are, how we're set up. So. Uh, going back to uh, 2009 was was the founding of Vivo, uh, a joint venture uh, between Universal and Sony. Uh, basically, it was you know early days of YouTube and trying to figure out how to really combat uh, piracy issues and and you know how do we uh, them as the as the major labels come out with a, a, a unified uh, source um, and a distributor yeah. for their and maybe monetize yeah. properly because there's exactly. been all sorts of complaints across the board about monetization so now your partners are kind of taking it into their own hands a little bit absolutely so you know coming out of the gate had all really the the major label artists under universal and sony uh Ooh. come true as as uh, as vivo artists and um you know, essentially, we uh, you know, we are a separate company from from YouTube. Um, they are really uh, obviously a very important distribution partner for us. But the way that it, it's uh, it's set up, we operate about um, sixty or seventy thousand channels uh, to this point on YouTube. Sixty uh, or seventy thousand. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I that, read something the other day that you're getting something like north of twenty five billion views per month. Is that close? Yeah, that's right. We're we're pretty close to a billion a day, and over the last you know over ten years, we we've, we've basically now done content license deals with uh, you know not just the major labels, obviously where we started, but every independent label, uh, independent distributors. So uh, at this point, even though you know the sort of entry point for a lot of people was okay, it's a major label thing. It's a lot. It's a pop right. thing. Um, there's really no reason that any artist, really anywhere in the world can't be uh, distributing their content through Vivo. Well, let me ask um, you about that really quickly, David. So when you're talking about indies, DIY, if they have a distributor, um, maybe it's CD Baby, Distro, Distro Kid, Stem, yeah. whoever, can they get their videos up uh, onto Vivo through those platforms? Yeah, absolutely. So most of the ones that uh, that you just mentioned um, distribute pretty pretty regularly through us. If if they don't already, in most cases, we're either actively pursuing a deal, or uh, you know maybe they're sort of revamping what their video distribution looks like, and and sort of those wheels are 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 moving. But um, yeah, a lot of those distributors and and many many others uh, regularly distribute content through us and. Um, uh, you know, we, we pay out those content providers and, and um, you know, typically we're, we're monetizing uh, videos at a much higher rate than videos that are yeah. just uploading directly to YouTube because of the way that we sell kind of all premium ads against all, you know, official content. So generally speaking, whether you're uh, an independent artist or a fully established major label artist, uh, the content that you deliver through Vivo is going to generate a little bit of a higher or, you know, significantly higher revenue for you. And, yeah. and quick, so quick question for especially for independent artists who you know basically they probably live most of their time in youtube do they have to go through a 
third party distributor to get their video into Vivo? Or can they just go to Vivo like YouTube? You know, and, I, and, and I'm just playing the devil's advocate of here's what everybody is used to create my account, get it authorized and start uploading my videos right to Vivo. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's something. Um, yeah. So the short answer is uh, yes, there does need to be a, a, a distributor or a label involved. Um, there are a number of ones that we work with that kind of eliminate a lot of those, those speed bumps for you. So it's, it's fairly easy to, to get set up with us. Um, that said, it, you know, the reason that we have kind of those, those distributors in there is just, you know, from honestly, like a paperwork perspective, it, it does make things a lot easier for us. You know, we're not paying out each, you know, of the, however, again, 60, 70,000 right. artists individually, we're, we're, we're sort of paying out by distributor um, in, in that way. But yeah, uh, hopefully, and, in, in, you know, we've uh, onboarded a ton of artists, uh, again, over the last 10 or so years, the, the sort of benefits that, that we offer, whether it's the obviously the monetization standpoint, but uh, editorially, original content wise, uh, growth optimization, all these other things, all these added benefits that we provide to artists, hopefully offsets that a uh, little bit of lack of control sometimes they give up by not being able to just click that upload button themselves. Sure, sure. So if you have, let's say I have, uh, I'm an artist, and I go through DistroKid, and you have a uh, an agreement with DistroKid, and I, I get my music, my videos, um, onto vivo i can i do what i can do on other platforms and create an artist channel and if so can that artist channel when those are on youtube be combined with all of their artist channels does that make sense yeah great great question so you know i've, I've been at vivo uh the better part of the last nine years and and going back to the sort of beginning of my time uh at vivo uh, I think some of the confusion around uh, artist channels was because there was a separate YouTube channel and Vivo channel. And yeah. a lot of times I'd be trying to, you know, onboard an artist and say, hey, we can do all this great stuff with you. But uh, yeah, you do have to create a new channel. And it's like, well, wait a second. I've, I've built up, I have tens of thousands of subscribers or not even maybe that many. Maybe it's, you know, yeah. I have 100 subscribers, but that is a, a meaningful number for, for somebody starting out. And um, the yeah. good news is nowadays, uh, going back to, I, th I believe about maybe two years ago, um, YouTube rolled out what's called official artist channels or OACs. Right. And you might've seen that there's like a little music note that kind of looks like a, a verification symbol next yes. to channel names. Uh, what that essentially does is roll uh, into one place, the, the Vivo channel and the, the YouTube channel. So as a fan, um, as anyone searching for it, you're not going to know necessarily that those channels still technically exist on the back end as separate endpoints, but roll up into one place. So whether you're uploading something directly to the channel or you're delivering through your distributor in vivo, um, all that content does populate in the same place. Uh, the content that comes through vivo is going to have that vivo watermark on it, and we're going to be able to monetize and promote it. Um, but it all does live in the same uh, the same channel. And does does vivo have any requirements on the type of videos that you can upload meaning I, I i'm assuming right off the bat it's you can't just upload you know you're sitting in the backstage dressing room and bsing the you know great content but that's what youtube is for vivo sure. is just music videos right and so, is there, can you upload a full concert can you is it you know could i just up can i take a a great recording from a live show and make that a video on vivo what are what are your restrictions yeah so it's a, it's a great question and the short answer really is uh anything that's that's uh that's music related uh and that meets our spec requirement not to get into the, the sort of technical aspect of it but you know that meets our sure. our resolution and all that kind of stuff um what we we want and yes official videos are are the bread and butter but uh you know, what we call pseudo videos or maybe sure. or static. Yes. So the, the day that you're releasing a song um, to any streaming platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple, YouTube, anywhere, there should be an official version of that song. Yeah. So just with the album art. Um, and are those auto generated by Vivo? So they're not auto generated by generated by us. Um, generally speaking, uh, a lot of these distributors have kind of yes. tools to create them. Well, yeah, like a lot of the distributors are auto generating. Yeah. That's why I asked. And my only yeah. complaint about those 
I, I mean, we get tons of views on those pseudo videos, art tracks, whatever you want, static videos, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> but the auto generated ones typically from distributors, I don't have the access to go in and add you have no control, lyrics, right. smart right. URL, that sort of thing. Yep. That's why we always do our own for, for focus tracks. But for those that don't know, you know, uh, that's where people listen to a majority of music is on like Vivo and YouTube, not Spotify. Yep. You know, they li exactly. listen to music there. And that leads me beautifully into this, the question that M Michael had kind of kicked off for a lot of our artists, we will have a release cadence of not only focus tracks, but videos. And they could be those pseudo videos could be lyric videos, concept videos, live videos. So th there's a whole series of these videos. Are there any rules or regulations uh, against having that sort of cadence? Yeah. So um, it's a great question. And, and yeah, to, to all those types of videos that you mentioned, that's all stuff that, that we want delivered through us. So lyric videos, uh, teasers, trailers, behind the scenes stuff. Oh, great. Uh, you know, Michael, to your point, you're talking about sort of behind the scenes stuff at a show. Like, sure, if, if, if it's if it's official, you know, not even official video, but if it's premium quality and, um, you know, it's a it's a tour diary or however you want to frame it, that's that's content that, that we want to. Um, and in terms of the cadence, um, yeah, I mean, it's really, really important to, uh, be uploading really frequently to your channel. Yeah. So, uh, the way that, that YouTube works, they're always making tweaks to how their, the recommendation systems work and the YouTube algorithm and how it's surfacing mm -hmm. content to users. And one thing that's really important, uh, in that world is making sure that your channel is active. And so, you know, a, a lot of artists might, uh, in the course of when they're sort of in cycle, be releasing content pretty frequently, whether it's pseudo videos, official videos, or, or anything else. Um, and then they might go out of cycle for however many months or even years and upload nothing to those channels. And what we yeah. see is that that artist and that channel kind of falls out of being recommended um, to, to fans. Uh, and it's really important to, uh, you know, think long term about uh, treating your video channel like you might treat a social media account. And, yep. you know, uh, you might upload pretty frequently uh, content to Instagram or TikTok or, or, or Twitter um, or anywhere right. else. Um, and you, you wouldn't just ignore it. Go, you wouldn't go dark for, yeah. for six, eight months, uh, 12 months like you sometimes would in, in video. So, um, yeah. You know, we're trying to reframe how a lot of people think about these video channels and say, you know, hey, how many different pieces of content can you get out of one song, right? Like, you, you, especially yeah. say, in country music, you might be working a single for a year. So, okay, yeah, you only have maybe one official video, or maybe you create an alternative version of that video. You got two there, but uh, pseudo video, lyric video, teaser, trailer, behind the scenes, all yeah, this kind yeah. of stuff. And space them out, you know, over uh, the course of, hey, a new piece of content comes out every couple of weeks, every month. Um, you can really get the better part of a year uh, keeping your channel engaged without having to say, all right, I need to yeah. create a brand new official video um, every month, which we know is, is not sustainable for most Yeah, artists. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, I know Michael agrees, too. I mean, that's where we find the audience growth and, and the success is over time, not just using it as a garage to dump your video, that you actually engage with it, drive traffic to it. But that all kind of leads into the subject of optimization. Perfect. What are what are some other ways if if I'm an artist, let's say I'm an indie artist, how can I compete uh, on Vivo? How can I optimize what I'm doing? Can you give us some maybe some tips on on some best practices there? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, thinking about there's a few different things. One, you, you want to make sure that you're just kind of following general best practices. And, and one of the things that we look at and it's a pretty easy thing to execute is just having really good thumbnails for, for your videos. You think about, uh, you know, where you go onto youtube.com or go onto the YouTube app and immediately as a fan, you're going to be served however many different thumbnail options for content. And it's easy to scroll through and um, you know, you might get somebody's eyeball for one second, three seconds at the most, right? And so a lot of times we see artists that are delivering videos with thumbnails that are really dark, or you can't really tell what's going on, or, you know, they're really far away, right. you know, and, and most of the traffic that we're doing is on mobile. So it's even compounded by the fact that it might be a half an inch wide um, on your phone. Point. screen. Yeah. So 
you know, we want to, we look for thumbnails uh, and this is something we do with all of our original content as well. Like have the artist face really up close, bright colors, high contrast, really fill the screen. Um, but also have it be really representative of the video. So, you know, we don't don't put a really uh, engaging, high quality image uh, as your thumbnail because it's going to grab somebody's attention. But then it completely looks nothing like what the video is because what's going to happen is they'll click it and then say, "Whoa, this isn't what I expected," yeah. and, and kind of yeah. you know to now. So um, having really really good thumbnails that are really representative of the video is like one uh one really easy way to make sure that uh, your content's really optimized um we're always doing all sorts of tests and experiments too as it relates to things like uh titles is it you know important to have official video after after your official video or uh tags and, and things like that and um you know there's sort of varying degrees of, of success uh with some of that stuff and um you know, it yeah. sort of depends again on on how YouTube is kind of running experiments and things with their their recommendation systems. But um, yeah, I think if you're if you're really regularly uploading content to your channel, keeping it healthy, and uh, you're really optimizing the way that it looks, um, those are two really good tips. And also, uh, you know, pay attention to your audience. Uh, think, look at the comment section. Look at what people are responding to. Uh, what are they commenting on that they like? What do they want more of? Maybe you yeah. upload a, a, a behind the scenes uh, video from the tour and it gets great engagement from, from fans in the comment section. Well, that's content you should be creating more of and, and really pay attention to what your audience is responding positively to. So, so many people on, and people, I mean, artists and musicians, ignore the comments in, in YouTube and Vivo and, and places like that. They just... They don't even bother to read them, let alone reply to them. And I, I can, I can tell everybody from experience, man, you can get into some of the deepest exchanges and communications in the comment threads on your videos, way more than you'll see on other social media platforms. Absolutely. Way more. Absolutely agree. And I, I, I do think that, yeah, there's there's some of that, you know, people sometimes ignore that space because I think the particularly on YouTube, the comment section can kind of has a bad reputation a little bit. You know, it's like it can be a, a pretty negative, uh, pretty negative place. Um, but but, you know, and, and again, from my own experience, because I've had I've got another podcast that can get a lot of negative trolls. It's all up to you as to how well you monitor and control your 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 comments. I mean, yep. it's just, you know, I've seen Facebook where you could leave your Facebook alone and it turns into pure garbage. If you go in there every day and respond and, you know, you've got all the features, you can block people and you can delete comp. It can be as clean as you want it to be based on what you want to do. If you ignore it and you put something controversial up, yes, without fail, it's going to turn into a cesspool without Absolutely. fail. Yeah, absolutely agreed. And I, I think that, you know, again, engaging with people directly is a, is a pretty good way of diffusing some of that, right? I think that a lot of people might go on and comment and think, oh, you know, this artist might never see this and whatever, yeah. it whatever they think. But hey, if you go in and respond and, and, and engage in, in dialogue with, with fans, but, you know, obviously keep it, keep it respectful and positive, I think that that pays dividends. And again, I think fans respect that sort of, uh, engagement from the artists yeah. and not even to just say, you know, we're just focusing on, um, you know, responding to sort of negative criticism, but, you know, when fans go in and, and are super supportive, um, it just it doubles down on their engagement. Absolutely. Or, that, or that, you just, hey, thanks for checking it out. And, yeah. You know. That dialogue back and forth. And, and I know just from personal experience, not just with artists, but when I see, if I make a comment and the artist or manager comments back, you know, that that's really meaningful. It's and you touched on something a moment ago that people think is really minor, but it's actually pretty big. And that's just like the thumbnail, right? Sure. If you look at Vivo and like we have a YouTube deck that we share, you know, best practices uh, with clients. And the example in there is a Vivo video. It's a Lizzo video. It's got a beautiful thumbnail, close up of her face. It's got the, you know, the watermark there. And she she tends to do or whoever set this up tends to do like everything right. It's got a great, you know, the, the title artist title version, 
artist title version. It's not anything weird. It's just, you know what you're going to get. It's simple. Then you click on that description, the smart URL, the lyrics, all the side men, all this great stuff is all right there. It's not, you know, it's, you're not sending them on an errand, you know, to go so they can get everything they want. Um, how important is it just beyond the thumbnail, but just optimizing the description and the title and all of that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of that stuff is really going to, uh, dictate, you know, how your content surfaces too. you know, things like titles and descriptions, uh, can really positively influence, uh, maybe even how videos are surfacing in search, right? So you want to make sure that if someone's going on, they're searching for your video, um, you know, regardless of, of the thumbnail or the title that you want to make sure that the, the tags and the description are up to date, because you're going to be providing all that ancillary information that's going to make sure that when people are looking for your content, that, uh, that it, they're going to find it. Because, um, again, there's a lot of UGC out there um, and, you know, user generated content, people ripping music and uploading it themselves. And you could have somebody who's super savvy, who's ripping your music, uploading it with really great descriptions and titles and, and doing all the <laughs> stuff that you might not be doing. We've seen it but when people yeah. when people search for it, they're going to find their version and not yours. And yeah. so, you know, that's good point. Uh, that's what you want to avoid for sure. D- D- David, is there any issue between or or with duplicate content between Vivo and YouTube? So, I've got my music video. Mm-hmm. I upload it to Vivo. Should I still upload it to YouTube? Should I upload everything to both channels? with duplicate descriptions, everything the same. Yeah. So, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, but when the channels were separate and you had your Vivo channel and your YouTube channel, um, a lot of times we would see that happen where artists would say, well, you know, okay, I want to, I want to grow this Vivo channel, but also I've got my established YouTube channel. And so while we didn't say it was a sort of best practice, I kind of understood that philosophy of wanting to, you know, cater to both. Um, now that they're merged and everything appears in the same place and it's all one subscriber number and everything else, uh, definitely don't be uploading, you know, duplicate versions because they would live really in the same place. They'd cannibalize views. So you really want to have that one version that comes through ideally through Vivo, um, and is that one optimized. So that, that, that would be if yeah. you have the official artist channel on YouTube, sure. if you don't have that, if you just have a regular channel, Yep. Is it still fine to do? Don't they combine all of those, David, anyway, even if you don't have an AOC? I think they're still the topic channel. I think they're still combining all of those, no? So I, it's from my understanding that unless you have that channel that's upgraded for the official artist channel, um, that it is still separate. The official yeah, yeah. Is- I was going to say, I've, I've had some clients who have all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're emailing me like, where did this other channel come from? And it, and it, and it's the pseudo videos that the distributor created. Yep. And they're like, how do we get this taken down? How do we merge this? And it's like, yep. yeah. So until you've been anointed with that official artist channel, I believe everything is still separate. It, it is still separate. And, and, you know, in my, my perspective would, would be that even if your, your channels are separate, you haven't been upgraded yet. And, um, it still wouldn't necessarily be the best idea to be uploading multiple versions of the same video. Um, you know, you're just kind of going to be splitting your audience and, and, you know, splitting view counts and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I would sort of, you know, obviously my bias would say, you know, Hey, deliver it through. Well, th- through so that, sure, that, that, that sure. leads to a question of, you know, a lot of times artists, clients don't work with the best lead times. Sure. <laughs> you know, hey, here's the video. We need this to go live tomorrow morning and you get it at five o'clock at night. Yep. YouTube, you can you can make that work. You know, if somebody's got to stay up at night and get it uploaded and set it all up. You can do that. What's the lead time and the process to get it into the Vivo system? Yeah, great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, it's going to be completely contingent on which label or distributor you work with. Um, there are, uh, certain labels or distributors that have a significantly longer lead time. And, uh, that might be related to legal clearance or, you know, whatever supply chain they're using to get to us. Um, we also have distributors that have an incredibly quick turnaround and can get stuff into our system very quickly. Um, 
the 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 answer on my side of things is that once a video hits my system no matter where it comes from uh it can go live in a matter of hours it's very very quickly um just has to kind of clear our system but that does not take very long at all um so again it's sort of distributor or label specific um you know we have some that can turn it around within a day others you know can can take can uh, a bit longer can it be um so you know i'm just making this up your distributor says you got to get me that video four weeks in advance. Okay, we get it to you four weeks in advance. But yet, if they get it uploaded to you in two weeks, can it still be set to go scheduled live two weeks down the road from there yet? So you do have that ability to say, yeah, Scheduling we'll get the it. we'll get the video uploaded into Vivo six weeks in advance. Yep. But I don't want it going live the second sure. Vivo gets it. Yeah, absolutely. And all of that stuff can be handled by whoever just delivers the video to us. We also have a content operations team that can help with that sort of thing. But yeah, whatever uh, date or time that the the artists and their team wants video to go live is absolutely up to them. Um, cool. We also are completely compatible with all of the features that YouTube's been rolling out. And we, we work really closely with them to make sure we have feature parity that when they roll out something like the, the red carpet or the YouTube premiere function where you can kind of create that premiere waiting room for, for fans to kind of, you know, uh, be notified when a video goes live and things like that. Uh, all yeah. that stuff is completely uh, good with us as well. So we have a lot of times when, yeah, a, a video might be delivered to us you know, maybe not four weeks ahead of time, but say a week ahead of time. And, you know, on Monday, they, they create the premiere page for a Friday premiere, create a little bit of, uh, you know, buzz and excitement for fans. Um, that's a pretty general uh, best practice. That does, does, yeah. does, does Vivo provide a, some form of a, a direct access backend admin to the, to the artist? So, you know, and I've seen this many times, oh my God, whoever set it up, typo in the the artist name typo in the album wrong url sure. in the description so that you can just go straight into the vivo backend fix stuff like that or does that have to filter through your distributor yeah so uh, unfortunately that sort of access is a little bit tough for us to to democratize on an artist by artist basis um it's something that i know we've talked about quite a bit even if it's just you know, hey, not turning over all of the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, but being able to just give some limited access to, art, to artist teams directly. Um, we haven't built out quite that much uh, in terms of that functionality. And, and so most of that stuff does still flow through um, the distributor or label that's involved. That said, we do have, again, our, our content operations team that's, that's in-house. Um, and you know when I'm working with artists on a on a one on one basis, if they're having any issues with that, I usually encourage them to hit the our content team and 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 put me on there so I can kind of flag things internally and get some stuff resolved. Maybe some you know a little bit more quicker, more quickly than it would be if it had gone through uh, you know the distributor. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and and that and that's I always say this to all my clients. That's completely fine. I just want to understand the system before we start getting into it so i can sit here and say yeah before this goes live we're going to triple check it on the distributors back end because we know we're going to have restrictions on the other side if something goes wrong yeah of course of course and and again we we know the uh in onboarding artists who haven't worked with us before Sometimes that is, you know, uh, could be a point of contention of, well, hey, I have 100% access. Exactly. Um, They're used to it this that. way. Right. So, you know, we, we understand that that can be a limitation. But, uh, you know, again, the, the support that we're throwing behind things, not just, again, from a monetization or optimization perspective, but also the, all the editorial offerings that we have to support, whether it's through playlisting or all these other different, um, you know, editorial yeah. tools that we've got on YouTube and off, actually, uh, hopefully that helps offset some of that. Cool. Let me ask you about the video itself. Today, as you know, you know, we'll, we'll make radio edits, we'll make kind of streaming edits. And the reason for that is you don't want a super long intro, you know, don't bore us get to the chorus, right? You maybe want a, a shorter track versus a longer one. Do you, from looking at the, the data at Vivo, do you see that same thing? Should people make videos with shorter intros that get to the action quicker? I notice sometimes I'll see a video and it's got like a intro card with the artist and the title that seems to hang there for eternity. Yeah. You know, what, what kind of advice would you give people to 
keep the attention uh, of people flipping through videos? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It's something we talk uh, quite a lot about and advise a lot of the artists that we work with around. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it can be tough because uh, unfortunately, people still do have very short attention spans, whether it's they're listening or watching something. And uh, and audience retention, how long somebody is sticking on a video is really important to how your video is going to surface algorithmically to other people. Yeah. It's, it's viewed as how, you know, how much are you engaging uh, viewers? Um, we've always maintained the perspective on our side that, you know, we fully support an artist's artistic vision. So we have these artists that want to create a, you know, five, seven, 10, 12 minute video that's got, you know, a cinematic intro and, and interludes and all these different things. We're hundred percent in support of that. You know what, if that's the vision that it's, that's the, the, you know, visual that most pairs with your song that you think really brings it to life. It's really important that you create that and you distribute that. That said, you should also create a version that is start to end music. So, you know, again, thinking about engaging your channel on an ongoing basis, having multiple uploads that you can really keep that channel active. That's yeah. a great way of saying, okay, I'm going to have this, you know, fully official version that's going to come out maybe with the day the song comes out. Um, and then a week later, two weeks later, I'm going to come out with the director's cut or vice versa. Maybe the director's cuts the longer one, but um, having something that starts with music within the first few seconds and, and plays uninter uninterrupted, excuse me, uninterrupted, um, that's going to really help you engage with your audience um, and, and keep people engaged uh, over the course of a, a longer period of that video. And yeah, uh, ultimately, we've sense. seen that be a, a pretty successful strategy for sure. So where can people learn more about who your dis distributor partners are and learn more about vivo and and really the get the, the technical requirements of the video sure. and all of that stuff. yeah 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 absolutely so um a lot of the uh information around distributors and stuff that we work with is uh is listed on our website so people can go to vivo.com and and check that out um you can also just email artist support at vivo.com. That's a, an uh, email address that we've set up, uh, especially for the, these circumstances. We get a ton of email from uh, independent artists there and we sift through all of it and we've onboarded quite a bit of artists, uh, quite, a, uh, quite a number that way, um, intro to various distributors that we work with. So we're happy to, to hash out any of that stuff. But um, again, most, uh, most any of the major distributors, many of whom you've, you've mentioned here today, um, are folks that we're in touch with on a daily basis sure. about coming in. So generally speaking, um, we're, we're able to help you out kind of no matter awesome. where you are. Awesome. Awesome. David, thanks so much for, for joining us, man. That was very educational. And uh, I've always wondered about, you know, all of these things. I see Vivo videos on YouTube. I see the app. I see. And you've really kind of cleared a lot of that up for us in the audience. And we really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm so happy to do it. And, and yeah, anything I can do to demystify what we do and, <laughs> and help artists understand uh, the value that we can provide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to do it. So thanks so much. Awesome. For the time. Thank you uh, so much. Thanks, David. Have a great day, man. Thank All you right, for thanks. joining us. Thanks. Bye. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. That was that was so good because, I, you know, listen, I think I'm in the same group as everybody else. I always knew Vivo was a separate company, but for right. the most part, oh, Vivo is just the official music video and that's it. It's nothing more. But it's also part of YouTube, right? Well, no, it's not right. part of YouTube, but that's where you find it for the most part. And sure looks like it's a part of YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I can imagine the average musician out there is just like, yeah, I, I, and frankly, I've had musicians who are yes. like, "What? What do I do? Do I do yep. Vivo or YouTube? One or the yeah, other, or and it's both, like, or both?" Right. And it's, it's just like, well, first of all, Vivo is not like YouTube. You don't just go create a channel and start uploading to it. There are, right. as we just discussed, yes, more hurdles to go through, designed to manage the quality of what's coming in is basically yeah. what it is. Yeah, the quality of what's coming in and the quality of advertising that's applied to it. And typically you'll make a little bit more revenue from it. I was fortunate in that a friend of mine was on the executive team when they started and I kind of watched it evolve and you know could help explain to people what Vivo was all about. 
And it is a super cool platform where you can make a, a little bit more money than you can just uploading things to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the takeaway here is you've got to put Vivo on your radar. Yeah. If nothing more than becoming familiar with it, reach out to your distributor and just ask them, how do I get my music video up onto Vivo? Because, you know, for the most part, if you go into CD Baby or TuneCore, it's, you know, when you're uploading a, an album, it's not right there saying, well, do you have a video that you'd like us to get up onto Vivo? So reach out to whoever your distributor is. Find, find out, out what that process what is. What the process is. Find yeah. out. It's really important to find out the lead times. You know, because yeah. I, 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 I and, and this isn't Vivo related, but I was working with an artist on a, on a major label. And in order to get your official music video into Facebook's watch platform, not just your page, but the watch platform mm -hmm. was a, a minimum four week lead time to get that video. Now, That's... how many of us have yeah. your music video finished? four weeks before you want it to go Not many most people i would say 90 percent of those that i work with i don't know about you jay it's not finished Same. until the week of oh yeah absolutely not the day before i would say that is accurate like 90 yeah. percent it's and sometimes it's like the day before the day as before. you mentioned yeah i I've, I've had artists who are like oh my it's god be, that's the yeah. wrong music edit We've got to, it's got to be colorized. I want a different edit. It, it, yeah. it, you know, so, so you've got to understand those lead times because yeah. it just might mean you can't do it or it can't be part of the roll days rollout plan. Meaning the day it's released, it rolls out onto Vivo. Maybe you're going to make it two weeks later. Not necessarily a bad thing because now you can come back two weeks later and say, go check yeah. out our new video on Vivo and drive people to vivo but yep. it's really important this is not like youtube where you just wake up this morning create a channel upload a video and share it right. all within yeah or minutes. go in you notice something's wrong you can't just pop in there correct the spelling it. save it and and go it's exactly. not you need a little bit more planning to your point exactly so that's really important when it comes to vivos to, yeah. to keep that in mind um all right that was a great discussion. I, I you know, I, it's Vivo's one of those that's always been out there that you're kind of like, I don't know what's the reality of it here, but yeah. Yeah. Um, David did a great job introducing it to everybody with some great yeah. tips as well. And trust me, those tips, they don't just apply to Vivo. They that's apply right. to YouTube, Facebook, videos, absolutely. Instagram, yep. everything else, everything yep. else. Yep. Um, all right. So before we wrap up here, just a quick shout out. Thank you to Hypebot, Bands thank in you, Town Bruce. for everything you do to support us. And of course, to our sponsors, Bandzoogle.com and Discmakers.com. We greatly appreciate it. We and sure do. You guys. Um, if you are, if you're watching us on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> we're not on vivo why aren't we on vivo got to talk to david can we get yeah can we get yeah. podcast videos up on the oh, wish i would have thought to ask him. yeah we question ask him. question to ask it's the video um um and it's music related yeah. That's right. <laughs> um but if you're on youtube please hit that subscribe button follow us on spotify subscribe on itunes and of course you can now get our podcasts on facebook just go to the Music Biz Weekly Facebook page and just like podcasts everywhere else, they just show up there, the audio. We're still putting the videos up there, but if you like the audio version, it just shows up just like you would on any other podcast platform out there. Um, that's it. We'll see everybody next week.